Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to take a look at my adjustable single carousel primitive. So what the heck is an adjustable single carousel primitive? Well, this is a carousel, as you might see. And typically, the way carousels are made, they're just a bunch of uh, basically planes surround the screen in terms of a cylindrical uh, geometry, and each plane is kept track of mathematically. But what I've done here is actually created just one primitive. And so it's just a single primitive, and all these planes are generated internally to the primitive and so you can actually manipulate the whole thing like a primitive but it's also clickable so if I click on, click on an image for example it goes to that image and you click back and it goes back alright let's refresh that and take a look at it again okay let's just click on an image and there it goes forward and click back and if I click over here and hold down it spins and click again spins around and spins back so you can you know you can do a lot with a primitive like this uh, not as much math to take care of because you're just manipulating one prim. And we're going to talk about how this was created. But before we do that, let me show you how it's adjustable. Let me bring up Flex real quick. So I'm looking at the Flex screen. I'm going to go to the Source view. And I'm going to actually change the uh, parameters so we can actually make this show you how it's adjustable. So here's the main carousel uh, function. It has a material list and it has basically horizontal gap, the uh, vertical gap, the number of uh, items in a row, the number of columns, the height and width, and then the number of segments. And we're going to come along here and let's change the number of rows. We had three. Let's change it to two and run the program. So we'll hit two and hit save and we'll run the program. And now you can see we only have two uh, rows in our primitive. And just click on one and there you go. Back on that and click on there it goes back. So that's pretty cool. And you can do the same thing and change that to one. Actually, increase the uh, number of items in a row. Let's do that for you real quick. Let's go back. Let's change it to one row. And let's increase the items to 20. And save that. And there you go. You got 20 items in a, in a big loop. And if you click on one, for example, let's click on one, and there it is, and it'll go right back. So, and now we're going to talk about how it was built. Now, first of all, the demo is at professionalpapervision.com forward slash demos forward slash web forward slash carousel. And the download is at code.google.com forward slash p forward slash flex cookbook 2 forward slash downloads list. Now, if you go to flex cookbook 1, it's full. So I had to start a, a flex cookbook 2. And uh, you can go there and download this. Just make sure you download Carousel Primitive and have fun with it. Now we're going to talk about how it was created. Uh, basically, um, uh, this carousel has a number of things in it. It has a horizontal gap. It has a vertical gap. It has a horizontal number, a row, basically a row number, a column number. It has height and width and segments. And uh, it's all one single primitive. Uh, one of the issues that I immediately encountered in creating this primitive is I just needed to know the geometry of it. And that was a cylindrical geometry, so I went to Math World and I grabbed the equations for cylindrical geometry and I threw that into my panel button primitive. So if you go back to one of my previous posts on this blog, you'll see where I created a panel button. That's the primitive you want to start with. So take that, duplicate it, change the name from panel button or whatever I called it, and to carousel for both the constructor and the uh, class function. Once you do that, just substitute these equations to create the cylindrical geometry. And that will give you your vertex X, Y, and Z. So what you want to do is go back and review that blog post and watch that video because pretty much building that just leads you to the road of building this. It's just simply changing equations. The only thing that's pretty peculiar here is that I noticed on my Z vertex, I had a Z, I had to put a multiply of 10 there. And we'll have to do some further investigation on that. Now, one of the issues I ran immediately, and once again, you need to watch the panel button to understand what I'm talking about here more clearly, is that in the panel button, I actually named things in terms of arrays. So if I had 13 columns or 13 rows, I would do a 13-13. But I didn't want to do that here, and it was not that easy to do it that way. I wanted to do sequentially number. And basically, I just multiply the horizontal number times the number of columns plus the number of rows. And that gave me actually a sequential number that I could use for the code. Now in the main code, uh, basically, the trick here 
was to find a way to keep from listing all those materials. If you remember back once again with the panel button, I had to list, I had to create a materials list, and I actually had to individually list each material, and, and the list got rather long. And I want, didn't want to do that, and so what I did is I put all my materials into an array, and I just basically just iterate it through that array. And of course, that was one of the reasons why I basically wanted to do things in terms of a sequence because that worked with my array more rapidly. And so I was able to condense all that material code. You can see right here, I create my material list, and I basically just iterate through all the bitmaps in my array. It was a bitmaps array, and I basically create the uh, material, the double-sided true, the interactive true, but all that's in an iteration. So I have to just list that code once and just iterate through it many times. Boy, it's a real time saver. Take a look at this code real closely on my blog. It saves a lot of time and it can be used for some more advanced applications. Now there's a big problem when it comes to dealing with uh, paper vision and that pixel measurements really lose their meaning. And as a result, you have to do some adjustment. You got this one over z perspective uh, equation that, as you begin to work with uh, perspective, the idea of pixels just kind of go away. And so I'm always adjusting now. So I have these adjustment parameters in the main code. I call it adjust lift and adjust height. Once you set those for your gap and your height of your material, it's set. It'll work for any row number or column number. But if you change the gap and the height, then you have to go back and reset these numbers. And that's just basically by trial and error and playing around. And that's what I did. I'm I'm set for the gaps that I show, and everything works real well. But as soon as I I change it, I have to change these numbers as well. Some adjustment parameters here. Now there is a nonlinear equation that basically governs all this, uh, but that's another post. And that's pretty much all there was to it. I mean, uh, it's just taking what I did for the panel button, and putting in the uh, cylindrical equations, and doing a little bit of adjustment on the main code, and I had a very nice uh, single adjustable primitive. Let's take a look at that one more time. And there it is, and this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University.